Welcome to the piano bar of the Waldorf Hotel, just a few yards from the Israeli separation wall. Now, not only is this an astonishingly posh boutique hotel, clearly already one of the best in this whole region, but it's an intervention into one of the poorest parts of a would-be Palestinian state. Now, all the, 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 the artwork on these walls has been curated and created by the graffiti artist Banksy, and it's confrontational. It's completely of its place. It looks into the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians, and it refuses to pull any punches about Banksy's vision of what is going on in this region. When the Palestinian officials arrived here today to see what had been going on under their noses without them having any idea of what was being built, their jaws were on the floor. And when they opened the doors, we were among the first people through them. It is the most extraordinary political and permanent installation of Banksy's career. The elusive British graffiti artist has graduated to hotelier and designer of the new Waldorf Hotel. That's walled off, literally, in the ugliest part of Bethlehem in the Palestinian West Bank. It is a surreal experience from the front door onwards. Hello, welcome to the Waldorf Hotel. Walled off? Yeah. I see what you did there. The English tea room come saloon bar instantly challenges the surveillance of Israel over the Palestinians and wonders what might have happened to Bethlehem's most famous rebel. Banksy's already a star in the Palestinian territories. He's been coming here to graffiti the separation wall since shortly after it was built by Israel to keep suicide bombers out of Jewish areas. Palestinians say it's a new apartheid, isolating and dividing people. Banksy, who doesn't do interviews, told Channel 4 News. Walls are hot right now, but I was into them long before Trump made it cool. For the last 14 months, he's been secretly buying the site, building it and employing more than 45 staff here. When you applied for the job, did you know who the owner was? Well, actually, no. I had no clue who's the boss for this place. Uniquely for the artist, whose previous exhibitions have been temporary, this one is intended as permanent, a gift to the Palestinian people. The hotel manager, Wissam, managed to keep it secret from the authorities, the media and staff. And you can see how. So how long did he spend here? Sorry? Um, was he, I mean, was he here for long, painting the walls? Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. And we're doing that thing now where nobody answers a question about Banksy um, to, to protect him, I know. But was he here in disguise? Or, I mean, how do you keep something like this secret for so long with Banksy here? This is Banksy. Yeah. Are you Banksy? Enigmatic smile. Banksy's art and ideas are all over the place. He has created 90% of everything on the walls. Well, here's a familiar image to British people, probably one they've got to explain to their Palestinian hosts. It's the old TV test card from the 70s, but it's only when you get really close to it that it's got a twist as she's writing Free Palestine. It's the presidential suite with George Washington, not looking too healthy. This one has been explained to us by our Palestinian hosts that this is a very symbolic image uh, around the hot tub because in the second intifada in 2002, Israeli soldiers were alleged to have deliberately fired on water tanks to empty them to make people suffer. That's certainly what people claim here happened. And as you move out towards the balcony, is this the worst view in the world? Somehow, through its cheek and humour, the hotel takes what is normally a distressing scene and makes it compelling, almost beautiful. It's almost like the Science Museum. It is, it's pretty high tech. There's the beginning of a museum too, on the history of Israel-Palestine and Britain's role in the plight of its people. Banksy says it's one of the reasons he's doing this. It's exactly 100 years since Britain took control of Palestine and started rearranging the furniture with chaotic results. I don't know why, but it felt like a good time to reflect on what happens when the United Kingdom makes a huge political decision without fully comprehending the consequences. A swipe at Brexit too, perhaps. 
Today, the wall dominates this place, snaking around people's homes and lives. But what really scares them is what else Israel is building on the road that connects Bethlehem to Jerusalem. Now, that's Jerusalem over there, and East Jerusalem in the distance is where the Palestinians want their capital to be. Now, Bethlehem is over there in the West Bank, with huge numbers of Palestinians living there. And where I'm standing right here is the route from one to the other. There are Jewish settlements, however, over there, that's Gilo, and then over this side is a place called Har Homar. So this is a sort of a no-man's land. The Israeli government has now approved building here, and the people who are living in these caravans just over there will soon get permanent homes. And that will cut the Palestinians off from their possible future capital and cut Jerusalem off from Bethlehem. As Palestinians have grown used to watching Jewish settlements grow, the springing up of a new hotel, opulent and fashionable, is a welcome counterpoint. While they serve English summer drinks and cake at the bar, a piano can be played remotely over the internet, and tomorrow sees Elton John play it from thousands of miles away. Will it work? Will it last? Will guests paying anything from $30 to $300 a night try to steal a Banksy? As the locals take in what impact this might have on the tourism economy of this town, there's only one question from now in Bethlehem. Is there any room at the inn? Well, we did ask the Israelis for their views, but they simply told us no comment. Earlier, Krish spoke to Dr Hussam Zomlot, who's an advisor to the Palestinian president. He asked him what he thought of the new hotel. Extremely impressive, brilliant. Only in Palestine, actually only in this spot, uh, you can do this. You can, you can actually have agony and suffering, and you can have luxury, art and music in such a way that elevates culture to a universal level that is unprecedented and never existed in the history of mankind, in my opinion. Do you think there's not a lot of sort of conciliation here, is there? I mean, we live in confrontational times, How arguably. You, uh, yeah. um, is this part of that whole the one thing feeling? I love, the one thing I love most about this place is how do you transform uh, conflict areas, this very uh, absolute situation of despair and suffering, sheer human suffering, into a haven of art and music and luxury and tourism and information. This is, to say the least, transformational, transformational in every sense. Uh, I have just seen it, so I might be at the effect of what I have seen, but transformational because we Palestinians have had a long history of art and culture. We have, art has been an integral part of our national identity, identity of who we are for millennia, for generations. And this is exactly why we have been able to stay steadfast and remain rooted in our land. It's art, it's our songs and music. To see Palestinian art elevated uh, to such a global stage is uh, definitely uh, the, right, uh, the, r the right place. And also to see this openness of this place. This place is open to everybody. We need to have not only British uh, kids, but international and Israeli kids to come and see the real story, not from a very confrontationalist approach, but from a subtle approach. Come and live the reality. Have you been concerned by what you've heard from Trump? in terms of a possible change? We have not heard anything uh, of, of, of uh, tantamount to a change. I mean, we have heard conflicting messages, but so far, so far, nothing of what Netanyahu uh, 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 has been uh, expecting has materialized. I mean, it's what we are... Well, he says one thing one day and then no, he takes it back the next no. day. Our worry is about Netanyahu because Netanyahu has an agenda. The agenda is clear. It's annexation of the West Bank. You see it right in front of your eyes. Uh, it is a zero-sum game. What we heard from President Trump, he would like to find the win-win formula, not a zero sum. And uh, we have been saying to Netanyahu and to the rest of the world that we will not allow for a lose-all for Palestinians and a win-all for, for Israel. There will have to be a win-win. Uh, uh, I think uh, President uh, Trump, Prime Minister Netanyahu, has received one ear 
of President Trump, and President Trump has already said there are two sides to this issue. We will receive the second year. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, Netanyahu has mis misused and misinformed the first year. Hopefully, we will del deliver the message ab about the situation, and hopefully, uh, this urge in President Trump of having the ultimate deal will materialize, and he will soon discover that if he wants the ultimate deal, we are the ultimate partners. As you drive into Bethlehem, you have settlements on either side, and possibly a new one that could cut you off. Are you worried about that? Bert? Very, very so, very much so, because as much as there is such a message, Palestinian message of coexistence and of uh, uh, trying to find a way of living together, these settlements are uh, a testament and a daily reminder, and they are encroaching, as you, as you see, deepening, expanding on a daily basis. These settlements are a reminder of uh, uh, the zero sum, a reminder of the culture of entitlement, a reminder of the uh, agenda of total replacement. So uh, we hope that the Nakba of 1948 will stop, and settlements are always a reminder that it's an ongoing Nakba, an ongoing uprooting, an ongoing replacement campaign. And this is exactly why it is crucial that the message is conveyed in the right manner and in the right way to the right groups. And this is why it's crucial to be here. The settlement exercise is the one single most vivid example of how much we are up to and how much we have to put in terms of the struggle to stop all this. Hussam Zomlot of the Palestinian Authority talking to me about his hopes for what this Waldorf Hotel could bring. And although he's sounding very relaxed about the recent statements by Donald Trump, it's worth saying there is a tremendous amount of nervousness here as well because the US president's position, both on Israeli settlements, Jewish settlements, and on the whole question of a two-state solution has shifted around in recent days and people are not at all clear what he really thinks, what he really intends. For now, all eyes are on what difference this place is going to make. They hope it could be a major intervention into the local economy, bring new types of people in as tourists and give a whole new feel to this part of the Palestinian territories.